Hello! In this video we're going to go over to Kinter Frames. So um let's go let's go let's go over the basics. So what is a frame? So a frame is to, is a Tekinter widget and it, it, its purpose is to group and organize other widgets. Um they are also useful for navigation throughout your program. So um they're used to group widgets together. Um, in order for them to perform a single function or simply just to group them together in order to move them about as one unit uh, throughout your um, sc uh, screen. So that's useful whenever you want to do some user interface uh, design where you want to have a few uh, widgets close together. Um, they're also useful for navigation. So this is actually how you, how you have different screens uh, in your program. Um, and we navigate through through the screens using um, using um, by raising a screen on top of another and uh, raising a frame on top of another frame. So I'm going to show you why we need frames now. Okay, so we're. Um, in the in the um, PyCharm editor now, and if I run my uh, swim school application here, we can see that whenever I log in, uh, we see a calendar widget, along with uh, with uh, along with the other uh, widgets in the in the frame. So this is a frame here. This this whole. Um, this whole blue box here is a frame um, and in it we have a label, the calendar widget, the logout button and the book appointment. However, this calendar widget is not actually technically in the frame. What actually is happening here is there is a frame, the, the calendar widget is inside another frame and that frame is on this main frame here. So what, what would this screen look like if we didn't have frames, if we weren't using frames? So let's, um, let's see that now. So if I go over and run this example. And log in. We can see that, um, that we get a big mess. Why do we have a big mess? Well, you see the calendar widget is made up of lots of buttons and those buttons are gridded uh, specifically uh, to, in order to match up with the, with the normal shape of a calendar. So whenever you have um, other widgets involved, um, due to the way that, this, that the calendar widget was set up, um, it, it sort of... Uh, spreads across the entire frame uh, into this sort of mess here um, because it wasn't contained in its own frame. Um, so I'll show you the, the, the code difference here. So um, in the swim school we make our own frame here and I'll be going through a full code example so don't worry but we can see here that we've got our own frame for the calendar view frame for the for the calendar called calendar view frame and then we we and we put it in the user frame and as a result that calendar is now contained whenever we instantiate it because we're creating it in the in the calendar view frame so that was the normal version however with no frames um with a no frame version I've commented out whenever you, where you create the frame and instead we just instantiate the calendar in that mainframe in the user frame there and as a result um, all the other widgets since uh, got either overrided or covered up um, because uh, I, I didn't contain the calendar um, in its own frame and the calendar uh, widget is essentially a whole list of buttons so um, that's why uh, all the buttons went everywhere. Uh, they the they weren't properly gridded onto this frame, and as a result, this is what happened. So that's why we need frames to contain widgets, 
and to ensure that um, nothing like that ever happens. Uh, so that's why we need frames. Uh, if we then go back to our um, to our uh, PowerPoint here, so we've got some rules for to enter frames or some uh, bits of some facts that are important. Um, so frames are widgets. So frames are widgets, which means that they can be customized like any other widget. And you shouldn't be afraid to use them. Uh, same as like a label or an entry box. Um, they're very easy to use. You, you instantiate them quite simply and you do, and you can easily grid them to your, uh, interface. Uh, they're easy to place and are very flexible. Um, every tick enter GUI has at least one frame, the root frame. So you may have only done um, simple uh, GUIs before with tick enter, where you're placing widgets on a root frame. Uh, but that is, the root frame is a is a frame, and so you have been using frames before, and they're that intrinsic to um, uh, tick enter. Now. Um, you may not know this, but the Python I I IDE, the idle, uh, is actually made out up of Tkinter, and you've been using a, you've been typing into a Tkinter frame. Well, you've been using a Tkinter frame um, that way as well. Um, so, you can have multiple frames in your GUI. So you don't have to have one frame. You can have multiple frames. Uh, multiple frames representing different screens or groups of object or groups of widgets. Uh, fourth, you can have frames within other another frame. So you can have um, multiple frames in one frame. Um, we'll see an example of that later on. And um, frames can be beside each other in the program, so they can be up, down, left, right. Um, you know, they can coexist with each other. Uh, beside each other and we'll, sh we'll show you a example of that as well. So I'll head over to the code now and we'll get into it. Okay so now I've got the theory out of the way it's now time to do some coding. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a navigation menu on the left of this uh, frame here um, and we're also going to make another frame uh, where the user can sign up um, so that's what we're going to do, but remember we're focusing on what frames do and how we can use them. So we're going to cover the points we covered in the PowerPoint where we're looking at navigation, grouping widgets together, frames within frames and frames beside each other. So we're going to do all that in this video. So, um, forgive me, I've done a bit of the groundwork in order in, for instantiating uh, the widgets. Uh, for the frames, but we're going to do all the frame work here now. Uh, so just did that to save some time. So first thing we do is we do in our Tkinter, uh GUIs is we make our um, frame, our, our root frame. And to do this, we do root equals tk dot tk. Okay, this is standard um, Tkinter, and that allows us to um, uh, create our root frame. Now we're also going to give it a title, we're going to say basic interface. This is going to be our basic interface, okay? Now we've also got, remember to put your root.main loop there. Now remember the root frame is quite is special because it's the because um, it's the root frame, it's the first frame um, and so all of your, your um, all of your GUI somewhat references it. So that's why we have to do this special. This is a special case frame, essentially. This is what, um, so that's what you have to do. But um, it's not special, so special, because we can we can configure it like any other frame or widget. So what we can do is we can do root.configure, and then this will allow us to configure the, things like the color of the, of the frame. So let's do background equals white. So this will set our root frame to have a background of the color white. Okay, so that's great. Um, and now we're going to instantiate uh, the frames, the the frames we're going, we, we will need for our project, our program. Now, in my opinion, it's, it, it's, it's a good idea to not really put anything in the root frame directly. 
So I wouldn't do something like TK dot label. Um, I wouldn't do TK dot label like root comma tech. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be making a a a uh, label in the root frame. I would, however, be instantiating my frames to be in the root frame um, if 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 required. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a make a frame called interface, um, and we're going to say that frame. So it's going to be TK dot frame. So this is how you make a frame. You do the frame name, and then we do TK dot frame. And then put in pass in, so we need, need the bra round brackets. So we're passing in a parameter here, and that parameter is going to be the frame that that frame is in. Okay, so there's only one other frame that this 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 uh, frame could be in, and that's root. And that's what I meant by your GUI sort of references the root frame no matter what. So that's why it's special, and that's why you have to do tk dot tk and all that carry on so that's that's that line there and we also could then do it for the sign up frame so this is going to be our other frame that we're going to have in addition to the process frame that i showed you at the beginning so tk dot frame root okay so we've got two frames which are in the root and then we're also going to have the navigation menu so we're actually going to have three frames so tk dot frame root okay so We've done that. Now, what I like to do, um, and it's quite useful, is I like to make a frame list. And this frame list will contain all of the main frames that I have in my program. So whether that be a register frame, a login frame, a, like a, um, a let's say, a stock page, so, something like that. The, the frames which have a function um, will go in this frame list. So let's do frame list equals, okay, so we're going to have interface here and we're also going to have sign up. We're not going to add um, menu to this, fr to this frame list, um, but I'll explain why once we continue. So for frame in frame list, this is an enhanced for loop. Um, and what we're essentially saying is for each frame, for each frame in frame list, so f for each frame in frame list, um, so the frame is going to be configured uh, to be white, so have a background of white. Um, Okay, uh, so my 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 uh, my main color for my GUI is going to be a background of white. So that's why if you have a different um, color you want to use, that's fine. Um, and then we're also going to do frame dot grid. Okay, so this is us now gridding our frames to the root frame. Okay, um, and it works the same as any other widget. We can do frame dot grid row equals one, column equals one, okay? So I'm gridding it to the to the root frame, I'm gridding it on row one, column one, okay? Both of these, okay? Both of these frames, right? Um, and the reason why I can do that, and there's not gonna be an issue, is because the, these two frames will never be shown together, okay? So that's why I can do this. Um, so, and then we're also going to give them the sticky property, um, N-E-W-S. So that just ensures that they take up the entire gridded, uh, allocated grid area. Pardon me, allocated grid area. Um, okay. So, then we're also going to have to do with the menu. So we're going to say menu.configure. And so that the user doesn't um, get confused, we're going to make the background of this gray and we're going to grid um, this menu frame to be uh, row one, column zero. So what will this mean? Well, let's get paint up. Paint's quite useful for explaining this. So we have a root frame. In fact, actually, we'd probably be better using the rectangles. There we go. So. Uh, this is our root, so we're gonna have our oh, gonna have our root here. This is root. Oh, I can't write. Okay, right. This is our root frame. Okay. 
root. Brilliant, okay. So, what we're gonna have, our gray is our gray um, menu, and that's gonna be, so see, see I did, I did, um, I gridded it row one, column zero. So, row one is here, somewhere here, um, and column zero is at the very, very bit, uh, at the very left. So what's gonna happen is this is going to be at the R menu, and it's gonna take up this space here. And of course it will stretch depending upon how many widgets there are there in it, and it will expand accordingly. That's a great another great as thing of, wid of frames is that they will um, grow to match the size of what they're containing. Um, so there's our frame there, our menu frame. So I could write menu there. So that's our me menu. Oh dear, this is bad. Menu. Okay, right, menu. And then um, we're going to have, we could just type it. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, and then we could use our, um, we can, right, so then, so then we have our interface frame, okay? And it's it's row one, column one. So it's still row one, column one. So it's it's after this menu frame. So this actual actually this whole other bit here is going to be um, is going to be the uh, the uh, the interface frame. Okay. Um, yeah, so you could you could then do interface. I'm not going to write interface there. Um, should have used the text bit, but whatever. Um, but you can see. Um, in fact, I probably I'll just do it for the sake of clarity. Interface. Um, menu. And then the whole thing is in a root frame. Okay, so you understand now that that this is the sort of setup we're going for here. Now you may be asking, well, why why are we why are we not including sign up? Surely sign up will also be have a grid row one column one. Well, we're we're gonna go on to that now. So we've we've made the frames, but they're not none of them are being um used at the moment. They're not being raised to so the viewer can see them. Right now the only one being seen to the viewer is the root frame. And so, what we need to do after we do our all our configuring, we can do um, interface. Okay. Now here's this is a special method um, for the frame widgets. You do dot tk raise. Okay. Um, and then what does that mean? What does that do? Well, that raises the frame for the user. So it's going to um, bring up that frame to the top. Of the stack of frames, um, again. This, so 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 right now, um, right now, actually, we have sign up created already, but it's being covered by interface. So that's why interface is shown to the user, and you can you could understand then that there's a stack of frames. So we're raising interface to the top, so it sees so it greets the viewer. So there we go. That's that. Um, okay, and then. This is the bit now where we're going into navigation. So, what we can do using this TK raise frame is what we can do is we can make a function called raise frame and we take in the parameter frame and that's going to be a frame widget. And all we're going to do is call frame.tk raise. Okay, so any frame widget being passed through this parameter will be raised to the seat to show to see the user. Okay, um, and that'll be useful in navigation. Uh, okay, so let's let's do some um, let's do some to can let's let's do some widgets. So we're going to now look at the navigation menu. So we're going to have a label. So we're going to do tk dot label um, menu comma text equals navigation and foreground equals black so we're gonna have black black text on a on a background that is gray because remember we're going for a gray frame here um 
and then our font is going to be title font. Um, okay, so title font, cool. So we've done that, and I'm gonna do our dot grid. Now this is interesting. This is gonna be interesting now. So we're gonna do row equals one, column equals one, column span equals three. Right. So this is what our um, label will take up. This is our grid. So what? So I've passed the frame menu. So this is what our this is the frame that the label is going to be in. Um, so it's going to be in the menu frame. Now you may only be used to seeing root there, but now we're passing in our our frames, our, our custom made frames. So that's going to be, this label is going to be on the menu frame. And we're going to grid it. So we're gridding it so that the user can see it, obviously. And it's going to be row one, column one, column span three. But this is ref in reference to the menu. So it's actually going to take up row one, column one, column span three of the menu. And of course, column span just means that the that that text will uh, stretch to take up three columns, um, should it require, essentially. And it's good to do that on title frames so that um, it doesn't look gritty essentially that you haven't used grid essentially uh, but uh, we'll continue so no that's the wrong thing uh, um, if we go back to our paint here uh, and if I erase this awful um, drawing this of the word menu here uh, I'll show you so we're now going to have our our text navigation in row one column one of the menu frame so it's going to be up here okay so that's where our frames gonna be okay our labels can be sorry and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do TK dot button so this is gonna be our like navigation buttons and we're passing in menu again again very simple guys um, we can do our process so that's the first frame uh, that's the first not the first frame the first this, like system um, uh, foreground equals black so that's gonna be yet yeah, black text and then we're going to do our font which is gonna be a button font um, I've predefined these fonts um, and then background equals gray okay so and then we're gonna dot grid now can you guess where this buttons gonna go yes that's right it's gonna go below the 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 um, label so it's going to go row two, column equals one. So there we go. So what does that mean? Well, it just means that the button, button, um, button process is going to be below, below this, in this, in this frame. So it's going to be below this label in this frame. Okay. So, um, that's fine. I'm going to copy this, paste this, and I'm going to say that this is going to be our sign up page here. And yep, that's fine. But we're going to make this row is free, so it's going to go one below. Um, okay. And then of course we need our commands. So we're going to need to make some commands for these. So this is our navigation coming in now. So we're going to define a new function. We're going to call it go to sign up. Okay. And we're going to do raise frame and then sign up. Okay, so what's this going to do? Well, we can't simply call raise frame. We can't just simply do, um, sorry, command, command equals uh, raise frame. And then, and then our frame we can't pass pass that in because that will trigger if you have the brackets there and passing in a function that actually says to the compiler to call that to the interpreter to call that function immediately. So if we had something here, um, use frame and then sign up, that's going to automatically call that right. Um, but since we're going to make a function which has only um one parameter, I mean, sorry, which has no parameters, um, and remove your round brackets, um, uh, we can then, um, 
it means that that doesn't happen, that we don't automatically trigger it. So go to sign up, and whenever we call that, it's going to raise call raise frame with the parameter sign up. And then that's going to, that function is going to take sign up and it's going to do sign up .tk raise, tk raise. It's going to raise that frame up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a new, another one, and we're going to say to go to process. Okay. And that's going to our um, raise frame, and that's going to go to our interface frame. Okay. So that's the same, so it's the same logic there. And of course, we're going to need to assign it to the appropriate button. Uh, command equals go to process okay now remember to not have brackets there okay so it's just the function name no parameters there okay so if we run this now um we should see if we run simple gui menu we can see now we have our navigation frame here in the gray you can see that it's gray i've set the menu Menu frames, this is our menu frame here, and that's configured to the background of gray. So that's our gray frame here. Um, we also have our, um, process, our interface frame, which is this white frame here. Um, this white square here containing all of our um, widgets here. And we can now use our buttons to navigate between the two frames. So we can go sign up. Oh, that didn't work. Process, process, sign up, process, sign up. So, um, yeah, I put the wrong, I put, I, I bound the wrong buttons to the wrong. Yeah, I did. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so we, um, we do, um, go to sign up, go to process. Sorry, my mistake there. Um, so if we run that again, sorry, we can then, we can see that if we go to sign up, we go to our sign up page. And then if we go to process, we, we, we go back to our interface frame. So you can see that that's quite a useful thing to have um, and a little navigation menu. Um, and it's very easy to then swap between um, frames here. Um, and that's a great thing about frames. They can be, they're very easy. They're very useful. They allow you to navigate between frames and do things like that with the TK Rays uh, method there. So what I'm going to show you now is a little thing um, with putting frames within frames. So I'm going to make a date, uh, like a like a sorry a time selector, um, for for you guys now. So which incorporates um, which incorporates the use of frames. So. What we want to do, essentially, in our in our um, in our uh, sign up frame. So if I do, um, if I close this, don't save, and then open a new paint. What we want, really, in this in this example here, is we're going to have our uh, in our um, so in our root frame. We're just going to have our um, in. We're just going to have our uh, menu, okay. So in our uh, in in our sign up frame, okay. So in our sign up frame, uh, what we have right now is a is a label and it says username, and then it has like a like an entry box, right? Okay. And then, of course, we have sign up in, in, in text there. But what we want is a little date picker frame that's going to go in here, right? So this is a bit, actually, this is a bit misconstrued. So this is actually an entry box, okay? Entry box, right? So that's technically not a frame, this rectangle here. But I'm just showing you that that's what, that's what an entry box looks like, an, entry, an empty thing. So, um... Yeah, maybe I'll just erase that so in order to not confuse anybody here. Um, so just erase this here. So you can see now that we're getting a slightly more complex, um, where we're essentially um, going to be putting another um, a frame within a frame. So what we have now, we have one big frame called root. We have a navigation frame here. And we have our sign up frame here. So frames can be beside each other in the same frame. There we go. There's an example of that. 
And now what we're going to have is a frame within a frame. Now we've already covered this because these two frames are actually in the big root frame, but I'm going to show you how to do that um, again. So, okay, so let's let's do it now. And for the record, this, this, this frame is going to contain um, some widgets that are going to perform a function together. So what these these widgets are going to be, uh, it's going to be, they're going to be a time selector. So what does that mean? Well, well I'm, the way I'm thinking of it, we're going to have um, a spin box. Again, I'm trying, I'm not trying to, yep. Yeah. So a spin box, spin box, and then a colon label, and then a spin box. And they're going to essentially represent time. So I'll show you that now. Uh, yeah, don't bother saving. So time. So let's do it. So we're going to make a new frame. We're going to call it the time select frame. Um, that equals TK dot frame. Okay. And we're going to put the root, fr the frame that this frame is going to be in as sign up. Okay. And then we're going to make the border width and again, you can yeah. So this is this is an, an example of changing the para the the customization of the frame in the frame instantiation. So you can do things like background equals blue or whatever in the actual creation of the frame here instead of having to call dot configure. But we're gonna do it here. So we're gonna do border width equals five, and then background equals light blue. Okay, cool. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grid that frame. I'm going to select frame dot grid. Okay, I'm going to set that to row equals three, column equals one, because if you remember the type the sign up type label is the first row, and then the username and entry box are the second row. So the third row is going to have our time. Okay, and now we're going to make the time the essentially the time widget. So we're going to say tk dot spin box. Okay, so. Um, it's going to be time select frame. Okay, so we're taking we're part we're defining this spin box in this frame, and we're saying that that is going to be from uh, underscore equals one to equals two underscore no two equals twenty four. So this is going to be our our hour selector here, and the background of this is going to be light blue. It's always a good idea. Well, it's not always good to do. It depends on your G UI design or whatever. But if you if you have frames, uh, if you have a colored frame, um, it's it's a good idea to have the f the widgets inside the frame be the same color. Now you can obviously obviously change that. It's up to yourselves. But um, it avoids like patchy spots where color should be. Um, so that's why I do that. And then we do width equals two. So that's saying that the only two number character length should be in the spin box and of course that makes sense because the highest number you can get is 24 so we do that and then we do dot grid so we're gridding now onto this time select frame we're saying grid row equals one column equals one right okay and then we do our label frame right okay and that's going to be time select frame and then that is going to be our text we need text and that's just going to be a semi a, a colon there and then that's going to be a background of light blue. And that's going to be like our um, semicolon. So, so what we're trying to do is we're going to do like, say you wanted to say one o'clock in the afternoon, we would do one thirteen zero zero. So that's that's sort of what we're, we're aiming for there with this. We're trying to represent that. So here's our, our colon there. Okay. And then... What are we doing now? Now we do our grid. So we do our dot grid row equals one. Okay, so we're on the same row because of course it needs to be on the same row. But our column is going to be two, right? Okay. And then what we need to do is our other spin box. This is going to be our our like time, our, our like minutes. So this is going to be uh, da, 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 da. We're gonna, instead of instead of doing to and from, we're going to do our values. So we're only going to allow the user to select a certain set of values we're gonna do zero to comma fifteen thirty and forty five so it's kinda of like kinda of like fifteen minute intervals. So background equals light blue width of two um yeah 
and then background of light blue and then all we have to do is change this grid value so we, what we're going to do is we're going to change this column to three so now we have this this um thing here so remember that our time select frame is now um here there so if we run this now uh, and go to sign up you can see that our time select frame is in row three column one now i did say at the beginning of this video that um, we can use this to easily move lots of widgets together. So if we change the the column to say two column two, so we're going to see a see the see the time widget move right. There we go to be below the entry box there, and we can even have it like on row one, column seven. So it's up next to the title title label there. You can see. So yeah, that's that's the beauty of frames. So I, I, I think I've explained that pretty well. And if there's any questions, do leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.